Hi, am I audible? Hello. Yeah, you're audible. Am I? How are you doing? Yes, you're audible. Pretty Hi. good. I'm fine. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here, Amish, and it's a really pleasure for us all. Thank you. So I see that you're in the institute. Am I correct? Yes, I'm in my graphic designing room. So uh, we will start with your introduction. Well, I'm a teacher and I teach Photoshop. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I started when I was eight years old, and that's how it has been going. That's so like earlier, you know. Like yes, it is. It's earlier. You know, I started playing Photoshop like a game, and mm -hmm. I think I've said this before as well. Um, my father brought our family's first computer, so it is not like these days where everybody gets their own computer, laptop. We didn't, of course, you know that we all didn't have the privilege for that. One family had one computer, and that family would be lucky to have one computer. So anyway, we had our computer and he was getting into desktop publishing. Back then it was DTP was the thing. And he was learning Photoshop and that is why he had Photoshop installed in his computer. So um, I started playing with it. He int introduced me to it. I started playing with it, you know, changing heads, you know, making people thin, fat and all that fun stuff. And that's how it started. And um, the way it started in a major way was when I was in college and I used to get assignments where I had to work with Photoshop. So that's all there is to it. Okay, and now it is very like, it's not very uh, usual to hear that a person, a kid at the age of eight, he started using or he started playing with the Photoshop because mostly people in the age of 20 or above 20, they started using Photoshop for their career and for doing, for earning money or something. But mm -hmm. that's quite very really unusual and very exciting to know, you know. So when you start to have fun with it, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't start Photoshop with an objective that I'll make a career out of this or I'll make money out of this. None of that. It was just a fun stuff to do. And it's just a fun thing to play with. If you look at anybody who's having a great time with his or her career, you'll find that those people are actually having fun with it. They have not got into it with the motive of something else, like making money or making a career out of it. Mm -hmm. So you started Photoshop as a plaything and you're, and now you're master in it, you know? Okay, can you- I don't, I won't consider myself a master, but I'll tell you that I'm good at teaching it. There are many people who are way better artists than I am, and I ever will be. Uh, but what really helps me is that I have always been good at, you know, explaining complex terms in simple ways. Exactly. That's that's why there are many people, you know, in our institute, most of our students, they are following you. You know, even my instructor is here. Let's meet him, Mr. Usman Shah. He is HOD of the, oh sorry, CEO of the institute. Okay, and he is also Hi. It's a, hello, how are you? Hi, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Uh, I'm good and I'm extremely and I'm really thanks to you. You just get some time for us. It's a really pleasure for us. You know, um, I'm your user in time of maybe that 2014. I have been watch your tremendous videos and I just took 2014. That, I, yep. I wasn't on YouTube on 2014. But I think so. I have seen some videos. It's a very old time. And being okay. instructor of Tenzida, but I learned many things from you. And so thanks to you, man. Thank you so much. It means a lot. You know. All right. Um, it's okay. Today agenda and today uh, your precious time, we just need to learn and we just need to ask some things about for our institute, for our students. Now you, uh, we can see your videos, mm -hmm. your channel, your position, your reputation, very nice, tremendous result. Could you explain about your career? How did you start it? And what about, what about your inspiration? The what point was clicked on you to just start this thing, to just explain and just share some experience we can share with our students. So I didn't start this as a career. 
in mind. I started this because I wanted to teach Photoshop because when I was learning, and I'm sure these are things which are very similar between India and Pakistan. And the thing is, we didn't have early access to internet. We were very late on the bandwagon. And then um, the issue was that I didn't have any resources to learn Photoshop. Nowadays, everything is available everywhere. Back then, we had no resources. And the only thing I could learn Photoshop was from trial and error. So I had to, you know, check on every menu, click on every button, see what they did. So back in 2010, 2012, internet was either very expensive or not available. So for every GB, you had to spend like a lot, five, six dollars per GB. So that was expensive. So that was not an option to learn Photoshop. And also there weren't any YouTube channels to learn Photoshop from. So the only way I learned was trial and error. And the second thing is I had some books, some thick books back in the days. So that helped a lot. So later when I started learning Photoshop and everybody in college had a hard time grasping the concept, I thought that maybe I should teach it. Maybe it's a good idea to give back a uh, there are many students who cannot afford education, Photoshop education especially, because back then if you look at learning Photoshop, they were very expensive, $100, $200 courses. So I wanted to, you know, create some free content, teach people and, you know, anybody who's facing a problem in a particular thing, I wanted to help with that. So with that in mind, I started in my second year of college and uh, yeah, that's how it has been. I mean, I haven't been, none of my videos have been viral instantly. Everything has been very consistent and I have been creating content consistently. So the, your main focus point, whenever you're gonna start something, you just more focus on consistent approach, right? Yes, that's all that matters. All right, so- Especially. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Over many- Yeah, that's students. all right. I was just saying, especially for, uh, creators who are uh, beginning for them to be consistent and be creating content on a regular basis is more important especially for beginners all right uh, in our circle in our society in our market so we have a multiple examples many young people many students are working hard and they're just all creating a channel and uploading content every day and content is very creative very important but they are not getting response as much they expecting. What do you think, uh, what type of techniques and the, what type of content we should upload? For example, just take a big example, Over Institute. Uh, the Over Institute channel, the videos are good, the content is good, the students are learning, but as per globally, we are not getting views, right? So I don't know what exactly mm -hmm. their gap, how can we fill their gap? I think there is no such technique or trick or algorithm that you can follow because if there's an algorithm that you're following now that's working, it's a very high chance that it's not going to work for your next video. So I have tried all that. I have tried, you know, uploading something at 8 p.m. and then deleting it, uploading the next morning. The performance even got worse. I've tried all the tricks. So what I can say from my experience is that, first of all, it's very unpredictable. It you, one of my videos can be about 13,000 views and the other can be 3 million views and I'm the same person creating with the same kind of talent. So it's first of all very unpredictable. The second thing I can share is that what helps to a large extent is how much value there is in the video. So the audience judge the video by a value. So if they find value if the video really helps them and if i don't have an agenda of course your videos don't but let's say uh, somebody's creating a video with something in mind to sell and that is their only goal so people will click off they won't watch it but if you selflessly teach and if you and if the audience finds value in their in your video and they trust you they will come back to you and along with new audiences so i think for me the most important thing is giving value selflessly so your point is to giving value is more important, right? Um, again, thanks to you because this video session and agenda is all about our institute, all about our students. Students can learn a new things from entrepreneurs. Students can learn a new things from their successful person. So you are a very successful person in this uh, field. So we really you. appreciate you. All right. Um, what type of terminology and what type of position we can set on you? Um, are you graphic designer? Are you photographer? Are you animator? 
and are you video editor because i have seen uh, many videos on your channel and i learned a lot so what exactly your favorite part what exactly your tremendous likely element in this segment i think as i said previously um i'm just a teacher and that's what i love uh I think this will be a little controversial but it doesn't have to be photoshop. I would love to teach physics if that be. So I just love teaching. That's all there is to it. And if uh you know if there's uh something I know whether it's photoshop, adobe audition, adobe illustrator and I understand it fully, I would love to teach it. That's all. All right. All right sir. Um there is another question about um what do you think about design? uh if talk about the what type of good designs we can create it in in a, uh, just like a teacher point of view the colors the typography their symmetry which element is more important to just make a good design what do you think what is your opinion sir first of all i'm not a graphic designer so i might not be in a great position to answer this i'm not a professional graphic designer but what i can say is that it depends on the person and their personality For example, I have lots of graphic designer friends and you scroll through their Instagram page or you just go scroll through Instagram and you look at their work and go, "All right, this belongs to that person. This belongs to this person." without even looking at their name. So with that, everybody kind of develops a unique style that's uniquely theirs. I think that's very important for any designer. It's not um in the beginning a lot of designer copy other people's work. get inspiration from other people that's all right but as you continue and as you continuously start doing your designs you realize and you yourself develop a quality that is uniquely yours for me what has helped me i think that applies to design as well uh with creating videos or photography or editing photos is consistency always so the only thing that a designer should keep in mind is consistency what i recommend is if you can create let's say one piece of content whether it's a design whether it's a video whatever that is per day or every two days whatever is comfortable to you without getting burned out you do that and after 100 pieces of content i can guarantee you that you will look back at your first content and laugh at it so that in my opinion helps the designer a lot consistency above everything else all right so uh just uh, some highlights about uh, whenever we just going to upload a video on youtube do you think uh their portion keywords the key tagging is very important to tag no tag doesn't matter uh there are videos there are tools by the way you can research it for yourself there are tools like tubebuddy and other uh tools with iq i think which allows you to search for tags that other people's video are using so if you open anybody else's video they would have some tags and that tool would show which tags this video is using and you would notice that videos with the highest views don't even have tags at all so tags recently at least i think in the two or three years in the last two or three years doesn't matter at all even when you upload videos even youtube writes tags are not important so not that important all right sir what do you think what is your inspiration personality in your field so you teaching something from uh, some abc person is there any inspiration personality in your life uh not it's hard to you know tell that this one person has been my inspiration it's hard to tell that because you consume content you learn from a variety of different people and you are the combination of the people that you listen to usually at the end of the day so there hasn't been just one person and you cannot say that this is uh one and only person that I'm going to follow he is perfect not if nobody is perfect and uh if he is good let's say in photography he might not be that good of a video editor so you learn the best things from every person so there's not one inspiration that when it comes to creating content All right, now it's time to Tanzila. Now Tanzila just want to ask them questions. Now Tanzila, it's your part. Thank you, sir. Okay, Nimesh, uh, we can see in your uh, YouTube channel, and every day we see new content. Every day we mm-hmm. see you are working on a new content and new tools you are using. So can I say you practice on that? Now these tools are you learn from anywhere? How, where where are you getting the ideas? Or- getting the ideas. Yeah. Uh between two videos there's always always a research phase that goes on 
and that research phase can be anything. So I have a list of things that I look at. So for example, I would look at what are people asking, first of all. So if you read the comments, and I do read the comments, what are people asking, what are they demanding, what ideas they, they do have, what they want to learn. So you create something that you haven't created before, which is in the demand of people. Or if there's something you have created before, but that needs an update because things have changed in the last three or four years, you create that video. Then you got to look at what new features are coming. So if you're a part of uh, Adobe beta program, or even if you have subscribed to what's coming up with with the latest updates, you just keep an eye on that, you know and then you just install it and practice with it or play with it and see what it creates. So there are lists of things and lists of uh, areas where you can look at. Basically, it's just keeping your eyes open to everything, to your audience reaction, to what's coming up in the news, what new features are coming. And at the end of the day, uh, it also matters as to how much you are learning as well. So it's important whatever you're doing, even if you're at at a position to teach it, or even if you are at a position where you feel that you have Uh, gained mastery of it there is no upper limit right you can always learn new things so you keep learning and that is how the ideas come for example recently I think two years ago I did a video on how you can uh, add a 3d effect you know add depth to your face with a 3d filter in Photoshop so then I was learning about 3d and learning about how Photoshop can generate bump maps this is a very boring topic if just explained exclusively but I thought of it, all right, how, what if I apply this on a face, how will that work out? So I started experimenting with that and then came up with the idea. Okay, you are saying that we have to first research on particular topic. Uh, can you please help us out, like, where we can research for these topics? Like, how can we learn, like, there are latest things in the market? Because we look at this, uh, the students or my fellows, okay, they learn many new things they search for the ideas but but they don't come up with the greatest ideas like you're presenting something and they are presenting something there it's a huge difference between them can you help us out please so it is all the basic idea by the way for example it's nothing new a recent video i created about photoshop releasing the photo restoration filter so everybody know it uh, by the way, that was uh, published on Photoshop's own channel three weeks ago. After three weeks, I created a video. So it is not the idea, actually. It's how you actually present it is the trick. So you have to present the idea in a way that people get interested about it. Or you have to present the things which are genuinely interesting. For me, what has worked is that it's mostly looking at yourself and asking yourself, will this get me interested? Instead of asking, instead of thinking, all right, uh, what will the audience think about it? Will the audience like it? Will they not like it? You don't know, there are other people, but you can tell, you can say for yourself whether it's interesting to you or not. And if there's something that makes me crazy and makes me lose sleep, I'll make a video about it. And that's how it goes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's very unpredictable again. It's really good, you know, these ideas. All right, um, I need to message it. Now you are on a digital board, so you have a good position on YouTube, right? Don't you think to the one day, I don't know, maybe you already have a physical institute. Don't you think to just start our own company, to start our own institute? What do you think? No plans of that at the moment. Um, and I don't have any plans. I think I te- love teaching online. And if there's an opportunity that comes up, for example, if, uh, for example, Adobe Max happens and they call me to teach at a conference or some other conference happens. So two or three times or four times a year, I can go and teach actual people. But apart from that, um, you already know since you run an institute, you already know that it's not an easy thing to do. You have a lot of responsibilities. Right now, if you just create videos, you just sit in front of your camera, you teach and you're done. You don't have to worry about taking the money from students, making sure everybody pays, maintenance, <laughs> paying the salary, and all the paying the rent and all that stuff. All right. So do you think, um, can you start some um, online courses with a different institution in a different world? What do you think? Can we start? I have started. I have started. uh, Actually, I have many courses. I have the courses that I recently made. Uh, I made it for a company, actually, but you can buy it. uh, And I made courses for Kelby One. So it's not that I don't make courses. 
but I make courses for other people because m most of my time is consumed by creating content for my YouTube channel or other social media platforms. All right, so how much time do you spend on this segment in your daily life routine? Are you spending a, a maximum time on YouTube or what, what exactly you want to manage your work-life balance? <laughs> First of all, there is no such thing as balance. Uh, this is life for me personally. I know it's not the most uh, optimum for most people, but I you don't realize, you just keep working, keep working. And it's not like I'm working all the time. I'm taking breaks in between. Sometimes I'm tired, I would go down, watch something, or maybe I'll just browse YouTube, look at gadget reviews, do something that you, you know, have fun doing. But then I would go back to editing a video because I'm enjoying doing that. And you don't realize it's already midnight. So then you get the call, everybody, your mom tells you to go sleep and then you sleep and then you wake up the next day and then you do stuff. So there is no fixed time as to, all right, I have to stop work this time. I have to start work that time. There's no such thing as that. All right. Um, on what year you just realized uh, you are just moving on right track about this segment, about this digital world? Uh, that's a, an interesting question because I never thought of it that way. Um, I'm not even sure whether right now I'm moving in the right track. I think. Uh, I think a lot of people tell me that you should hire this people, you should hire that, uh, hire a video editor, do stuff. Uh, but I enjoy doing it myself. I enjoy shooting myself and editing the video myself uh, because there are little things that I like adding and experimenting in the video that I probably wouldn't have much control over if I have an editor. So uh, sometimes for commercial projects, I do have an editor, but that's besides the point. Sorry for digressing. My point is, even right now, I don't know if I'm moving in the right track. I just make sure that I, you know, give my best and just love what I do. That's that's what matters to me. All right. You know, and again, there there are no who's there to decide what track is right or wrong. You never know. <laughs> All right. You know the how my thing I have learned from your videos, especially I learned the skin retouching. There are different techniques. The one technique you mentioned there, a very short technique, is just control eye, their vivid light, and just pile other yes, ends. All right. That's very old. That was a I don't recommend that technique. And <laughs> there are other techniques, too. especially the skin retouching technique, you mentioned the different options on your channel, the different videos. It's a really uh, good and the necessary for the photo, photo editing students, right? But anyway, sir, thank you so much, sir. Nice of you. It's a really nice time to spend with you. Whenever you just chance to come to Pakistan, so we are more welcome to. And thank uh, you so much. And your over hospitality for your side. So, do you have any chance to come in Pakistan in future? I have no plans at the moment, but let's see. Let's hope that I get to. Uh, it would be fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Because you know, there are many followers of yours are here. Yes, your <laughs> fans have I know. I get a lot of. I get a lot of comments from Pakistan. So yes, it's. I think my number four, five, or something like that audience, right there. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Mesh. Thank you so much, sir. Nice to you. It's a nice time spent with you and learned many things from you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and have a great rest of the day. Take care. You too. And you thank too. you so much. Thank you, Ji.